So here we begin our exploration of subspaces. So starting with our definition here, we have that a subspace H of some vector space V is a subset that satisfies the following three properties. So our first property is that the zero vector is in the subspace. So we can say that since the zero vector is an element of our subspace, we often denote this as zero vector sub V. So since the zero vector is in the vector space, then we can conclude that the zero vector is in the subspace. Property number two, the subspace must be closed under addition. So we can say for all vectors u and v in our subspace h, then vector u plus vector v is also an element of the subspace. So it's that same definition that we looked at with vector spaces. And property number three, the subspace must also be closed under scalar multiplication. So we can say for all vectors u in our subspace h and for all scalar multiples c, the subspace is closed under scalar multiplication if that scalar multiple c times vector u is also in the subspace. So these three conditions here, the zero vector being in the subspace, the subspace being closed under addition, and the subspace being closed under scalar multiplication are what makes a subspace a subspace. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, what's the difference between the vector space and the subspace? And the key thing is, is that it's a subset. So we can also make a love note here that subspaces are vector spaces. The subspace is simply a smaller region of your vector space. So we could say if this is our vector space V, and we can shade this in. So there's your vector space V. Our subspace is just a smaller region within this vector space. So this little red region here, this is H, our subspace. So this actually also allows us to make the conclusion that a vector space is a subspace of itself. So a vector space is a subspace of itself. So we have a vector space is a subspace of itself, and subspaces are also vector spaces that live within a bigger vector space. So to help us further understand this, let's think about a cute little example here. And so actually I'm going to label this example as a caution. So a common misconception is that R2 is a subspace of R3, but I'm here to tell you that it's not. R2 is not a subspace of R3. They are entirely separate. So an easy way to think about this distinction is to think about the points in each dimension. So if you're thinking about R2, Vectors in R2 have two coordinates, or two components. So vectors in R2 have two components, x and y in general. Versus when we think about R3, vectors in R3 have three components. y and z in general. And if we were to think about this graphically here, if we think about space, here's our z axis, here's your x axis, here's your y axis, 
and you may try to argue, well, you can see the xy plane. And we can see here's your here's the xy plane down here, and you're absolutely correct. You can see the uh, the xy plane. However, if you think about some vector here that lives in the xy plane, we would define this as xy zero. So a point or a vector in three dimensions has three components, which will never be an element of R2. So keep in mind here, R2 is not a subspace of R3 because it's not closed under addition or scalar multiplication because the vectors have different components.